Triathlons place tremendous pressure and stress on the body, both during the event and throughout the preparation that precedes it. As a result, triathletes must pay particular attention to what they eat, how much they consume, the gear they use, the necessary preparation, and the things to avoid before the race to resist the strain. In today's video, we'll be sharing with you the things to avoid before your triathlon race. If you think you're doing too much or maybe not doing enough, be sure to stay with me until the end of this video. Welcome to Triathlon. On Global Insights, the motivation channel for all triathletes. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated with what's happening in the triathlon world. We keep you updated about triathlon news, incredible races, training tips, and information about pro athletes. Before anything else, consider why you're getting into triathlon in the first place and what you intend to achieve from the beginning triathlon training experience as part of your introduction to the sport. Are you just motivated by a desire to have a good time and extend your social circle? Do you need a fitness kick in the pants to help you fight the bulge of middle age? Have you been motivated by news coverage of a seemingly unachievable goal? Are you an athletic type already, aiming to be a serious contender? Whatever your motivations were at the outset, writing out your objectives and priorities can help you design a racing season tailored to your preferences and abilities. Consider various elements and possibilities when you search through race schedules for important events. For individuals who thrive on race day support, local events are likely filled with friends and family. Still, destination trip races may be a unique and lovely chance to see different nations and cultures, albeit slightly beyond your comfort zone. You can calculate how much time you can devote to training and racing and be proactive in informing your spouse or family about your goals. Involving people closest to you in your new activity and being honest about the time commitment can go a long way toward preventing issues of stress and resentment that may arise if a triathlete's concentration on training becomes obsessive. A planned workout regimen will pay off in the long term, no matter what your goals are. Not only will your training be more constant, but it will also be far more targeted and particular for each phase. First, you should do relatively low intensity training to establish a level of fitness and a platform from which to progress. Then, as your event approaches, your training should become more race specific, such as brick runs, which will help you become acclimated to running off the bike. You'll be able to juggle other responsibilities by planning out your weeks and months, and you'll be more likely to meet your goals on race day since you'll be able to phase your training into a more focused manner. Swimming, biking, and running appear to be easy activities, but when you combine them and add in their period between, the gear required might resemble a month-long journey up Everest. But don't worry, here's a list of things to stay away from before your triathlon race. Number one, don't experiment with anything new. While some athletes advocate not attempting anything new, I entirely agree, yet I always believe that you will eventually try something new. However, don't attempt something new during a major race. If your plans don't go as planned, it might throw your mind off and ruin your entire day. And it's all because you should have known better than to attempt anything new on the day of the race. Number two, if you're going to a race, be sure you have a plan. Racing strategies have a purpose. Much as new parents devise a birthing strategy, it's a detailed plan for how you want your day to proceed. Contingencies for situations that may or may not materialize on race day are incorporated in a competent racing strategy. Number three, avoid fatty foods. Avoid fatty foods since they lack the carbs. You'll need to keep your body going during the middle and end of the race. A fried breakfast may seem tempting, but it will leave you feeling sluggish and heavy, which is the last thing you want. What food should you avoid before a triathlon is just as crucial as what you should consume. As a general guideline, stay clear of anything that hasn't been a part of your diet in the weeks preceding the event. As a general guideline, stay clear of anything that hasn't been part of your diet in the weeks preceding the event. Number four, don't overwork yourself. Don't listen to the voices in your head telling you that you need to train more the week before your race because you don't feel ready. I have to continually tell my athletes to relax and persuade them that their training is complete and that everything will work out on race day. It's not that they aren't ready. They don't feel ready since their friends or training partners are still working hard for the same or a different marathon. Athletes may be their own worst enemies and undertaking difficult training the week before a big event can completely undo all of your hard work. Most athletes struggle with tapering, so you're not alone. However, Recognize that you should aim to avoid overtraining the week before your event. It is preferable to be 10% undertrained 
rather than 1% overtrained. You can make up that 10% on race day, but it takes time to go back to your natural self if you've been overworked. Number five, you won't be able to race well if you don't warm up. Some sportsmen believe that they have to show up and perform well. Wrong. If you want to succeed and achieve something, you must first warm up. Doing some dynamic stretches ahead of time is a terrific way to get the blood flowing quickly. Preparing your muscles on race day will help you achieve excellent results. When running anything from a 5K to a marathon, you should first warm up. Although your marathon warm up may be brief, it is preferable to feel stiff, lethargic, and sluggish when you begin. On the other hand, you might expect poor results if you do not warm up for your race. Number six, don't give up. Even if you're having one of the worst days of your athletic career, there is no reason to abandon a race if you're not being taken out on a stretcher or your bike isn't entirely smashed in half. Even if you're a professional athlete, you should complete all endurance events even if you have to walk to the finish line. When you adopt a new viewpoint on a day that you want to quit, you'd be amazed at what you may learn about yourself, others, and more. So don't just give up until you have a compelling reason to do so. The difficult days during your race will help you define your character and drive you to fight past the temporary discomfort in the future. That ends our video for today. We do hope that this information and tips help you in many ways. Thanks for watching and staying up with me until the end. You may like, subscribe, and press that notification bell so that you'll be updated on our next upload. Take care, everyone. Adios.